Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm looking at the latest addition to the Hornby Railroad Plus range. <music> The title of this video says that today's model is new, but technically speaking that's not the case. It actually dates back to around 1980 with this, the Airfix release of the 1400 or 14XX Great Western tank engine. Since then, Hornby have acquired this model and they re-engineered the chassis, in fact I think they redesigned it from the ground up, and have re-released it many times over the subsequent years. But today's model is in the Railroad Plus range for the first time, which means it's had some livery enhancements. And that's why I've decided to pick it up and take a look. So here we go with this, the Hornby 14XX in the Hornby Railroad Plus range for the first time. And this is actually a reasonably affordable model. The RRP is £74.99, which is cheaper than most Hornby Locos, and at the retailers you can pick this up for just less than £70 at £67.49. Now, is that a lot of money for this? I don't know yet. It will depend on how good the livery is. But for a Loco that's not your basic train set Hornby 060 or 040, Less than £70 seems to be pretty reasonable, so I'm interested to see what this is like. I really want to see in what way the livery has been enhanced, I think that's going to be really important. And I also want to see how this runs, because the last new Hornby 14XX I had, had terrible performance issues and we'll talk about those later on. So there's a lot to find out with this, let's get started and let's take a look. So I'm very curious about this one. Obviously at the moment it's pretty well shrouded in its packaging so I've not really been able to see what the difference is on this model, whether the quality of the paint or the finish is actually any better than before. So I do want to find out pretty quickly. Let me show you the end of the box then. So it does actually say on this box Railroad Plus Enhanced Livery. One of my criticisms of Hornby's last Railroad Plus locomotive that I looked at was that you couldn't tell that it was in the Railroad Plus range by looking at the box. It never said the phrase Railroad Plus on it. So at least now we know that there is an enhanced livery on this and it stands out from the regular Railroad range. It's R30319, it's the Great Western 042T Class 14XX and it's number 1451. And as a Hornby Railroad loco, there's nothing to read on the back of the box of any interest. So let's open it up and let's take a first look. Here we go. Good value by the looks of it, but that's only if it looks decent and runs well. And uh, hopefully, like I say, it will look quite a bit better than the previous versions of this, uh, which looks quite plasticky, and I'll show you that in just a second. Instructions for the Colic Class 14XX. Let's open it up. So this looks like pretty much the same chassis that was in the last Hornby release of this. So removing the body, it's quite a faff, there's pipe work to unplug, you've got to remove the chimney. And then you've got the Type 7 motor, is that inside? And as far as I can see, there is no DCC decoder socket on this, which is unfortunate. So we'll open it up later and check whether there is one. Uh, more on this, traction tyres, yes it's got rubber traction tyres because it's a light plastic model, or at least it always used to be. Basic lubrication points, yeah, nothing too complex there, and nothing of very much interest on the back. Any accessories? It doesn't look like it. No, no accessories. So, let's open up this clamshell and let's take a look. Here we go. Hopefully get a first look, oops, at that livery. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, all right. So, the finish, I would say, looks a little bit better slightly more satin looking. Let's pull in the last version, railroad, regular railroad version. Um, yeah, I think the difference is not massive, but perhaps there is a slight improvement to the finish just looking down on the loco like this, um, but not much. All right, well, let's pull the loco out and let's see what it actually looks like. Okay. The Hornby Railroad Plus 1400. And there it is, up close and personal for you. A simple livery, yeah, there's no lining or anything on this, but that's all fair enough. I'm guessing what they mean by the enhanced livery then is that the Great Western lettering on the side here 
has a few more different colours and layers to it than, let me pull in the other one, than the old one, which as you can see was just the single colour just in the gold there. So there's that. Ultimately though, there's really not much difference. It's quite disappointing actually. A slight improvement to the black sections on top of the tanks there and finish. Yeah, that looks a little bit more satin, but the green of the body uh, is still relatively matte looking, I would say. So the improvement on livery here is very, very superficial. And other than that, it looks exactly the same as when it was just in the regular railroad range. So not as much to see as I was hoping. But anyway, let's have a bit of background on the 1400 in real life. And then I'll show you some of the details up close and I'll try and figure out whether there are other improvements that I haven't noticed yet. The 14XX, originally known as the 4800 class, was introduced to the Great Western to the design of Charles Collett in 1932. The class was lightweight and intended for branch line passenger work. A total of 75 of the class were built over four years and they were reclassified to 14XX when some of the 2800 class were experimentally converted for oil firing, those being large 280 locomotives. These were classified as the 4800 class instead. The 1400 was designed specifically for auto coaches, which were fitted with driving cabs, allowing a driver to pilot the locomotives remotely. They never were that successful though, and they were eventually scrapped in 1956. Four have been preserved, and the rest, very sadly, were scrapped. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the latest version of the Hornby Railroad 14XX. And right off the bat, I don't think there's anything at all wrong with this for less than £70. I think the value for money is absolutely fine. Otherwise, though, I am a little bit disappointed in this, I have to say. The livery improvements here are extremely superficial. I was hoping to see something similar to what we saw on the Lord of the Isles loco that Hornby did a year or two ago. The finish on that was glorious, really gorgeous and satin, and the metal components had been electroplated, which made them look really nice and convincing. This 14XX has a relatively plasticky finish for the most part, and the safety valve bonnet here just has the same dull plasticky finish that it's always had. I think the finish is slightly more satin now than on the previous release, particularly on the black sections. Yeah, there's a slight bit of extra shine to those, but that's only when directly comparing them. I think looking at this on its own, you wouldn't say that this had a particularly good quality finish. Like I said, the Great Western lettering does look better though. There's more colours, more complexity. That's the kind of thing we're looking for. Compare that with the old one. Yeah, it obviously looks a lot better. The running numbers on the buffer beams, these also now have a sort of black outline or shadow around them, whereas before they were just the text and that was it. I would say that the number plate on the side of the loco is actually worse than on the previous railroad version. The previous railroad version had a nice sort of shiny plate, it wasn't separately fitted or anything, but at least it had that kind of glossy finish that a metal plate would have. This one is more matte and it doesn't look as good. Also, I thought the Railroad Plus range was supposed to come with etched metal plates, at least the diesels do. So obviously that's not something that extends over to the steam range, which is a pity. It's also the lightest version of this model I've ever collected. It weighs in at 161 grams. The original Airfix release was 185 grams, which is much heavier. And even the previous Hornby releases were heavier than this at 167 grams. So it's actually pretty light. Having said that, there does seem to have been a number of minor mechanical improvements made to this, and we'll talk more about those later on, but I can see, for instance, that all of the driving wheels are touching the track. The last 14XX I bought from Hornby had the main driving wheels with the traction tyres fitted to them not actually touching the track, so the traction tyres did nothing, and it was a terrible hauler. Well, now, with all the wheels on the track, it should at least work properly, which is good. Otherwise, though, it's a very basic model, which is perfectly acceptable and expected on a Hornby Railroad model, uh, but it does mean that there's not a lot to see in terms of detail. So let's start from the bottom and move up. So you've got buffer beams, which actually do look fine. We've got the separately fitted pipes on those, and the metal buffers, although the buffers are not sprung. The running plate is fairly detailed, with lots of riveting and moulded lamp brackets. Yeah, that's all right. The front of the smoke box has the moulded dart instead of a separately fitted one. Yeah, obviously that doesn't look very good, but it does mean that it's not too fragile. 
You do have separately fitted wire handrails, which is good to see, and a fair bit of detail on top of the tanks. The chimney is separately fitted and made of metal, and the finish on that part is reasonably good. Although most of the other detail on top of the boiler, such as the dome and the relevant pipework, this is all a part of the moulding. The whistles look good, I think those are real metal and they've been polished up a little bit more than on previous versions of this, so they look nice and shiny, which is good to see. Although the cab area is particularly disappointing, so there are no separate glazing pieces in this model, no glazing at all, and no cab detail of any kind. Yeah, there's no back head detail, it's just an empty space inside the cab, and you can even see part of the motor in there as well. So certainly not a convincing model. Although around the back we do have the bar effect on the rear cab windows, yeah that looks pretty decent. And the handrails around the cab are actually separately fitted, although the ones around the coal bunker appear to be just part of the moulding. Rear of the loco, most of this detail, such as the lamp brackets, those are just part of the moulding. Similarly detailed buffer beam, so not a lot to really talk about there. And basic underframe detailing as well. The springs and the axle box for the trailing axle, yeah that looks all absolutely fine. The wheels look okay, although the centres haven't been covered over, so the axles don't look particularly realistic. But as a railroad loco, I guess that's to be expected. There's also this separately fitted pipework underneath the running plate, which I think is pretty impressive for a railroad loco. So certainly a big step up from your typical 040s and 060s that you see in the Hornby Railroad range. And although the improvements to the decoration are pretty superficial, at least they are an improvement and not a downgrade for the most part. One thing I really don't like though are these couplings. They're actually not even NEM couplings. So if I pull these out, yeah, you can see, I think these are the Airfix type couplings, non-standard. They are gonna be compatible with the modern Hornby tension locks, although they are slightly different, so it's not ideal. But if you're someone who uses a different kind of NEM coupling, well, this is going to completely scupper you. So not a terribly inspiring model, but I do think for less than £70, it's actually really decent value. That is assuming that it works properly though. So with that, let's get it down onto the track. Let's give it a test and let's also take a look at the mechanism. So there it is, Hornby's 1400 down onto the track. And I'm afraid that this is where the review takes a bit of a turn. So far things have been okay, but now that we're talking about mechanism and performance, things are incredibly disappointing to say the least. I've already filmed the initial performance test and I'll show you how that went in just a second. After that I took a look at the mechanism, I'd forgotten how bad this thing was, but I've been reminded. It's poorly designed, the performance sucks, and something crazy even happened, which made this model potentially dangerous. We'll talk about that later. First of all though, let's talk about the mechanism. Started off looking pretty good. There is evidence of some upgrades because each wheel on this Loco actually has two pickups going to each wheel. The previous version I tried only had one pickup going to each wheel. So that gives this six wheel locomotive the same pickup capability really of a 12 wheel locomotive. With a few caveats, obviously we've got the rubber traction tyres on here because the loco is so light, so that pretty much insulates those wheels from the track. I guess when you go around curves you might get some power picked up through the flanges, but you can pretty much count those out. And obviously if one of these other wheels does break contact with the track, then you lose both pickups on it too. But it is good to see more reliable pickups on this thing, although <clears throat> they're not exactly more reliable. Spoiler. The base keeper plate is really annoying to remove and I don't really recommend doing this, there's no good reason to. You've got screws to remove, you've got pipes to pull out, the couplings to pull off, clips to undo and then it's hardwired anyway so you can't pull it away completely. They couldn't hide the fact though that this has got no proper bearings on the driving axles, it just sits straight into the chassis, a really really poor quality chassis. For the body removal I left all the screws out and just removed the chimney which has got a screw down inside it and this reveals the metal chassis which packs the tanks with weight which I guess is a good thing to see. As you can also see though there is no DCC socket on board which is strange because when a Railroad Plus Loco does have a DCC socket Hornby mention it in the specs whereas on this Loco there is no mention of DCC on the specification at all. So instead of being helpful and mentioning that this loco doesn't have a DCC socket, they've just omitted to mention it entirely, presumably to stop people from being put off and not buying this. 
so not useful to the customer. And just like the use of non-standard couplings, this means that this loco really won't be compatible with that many people's systems. Can't use different NEM couplings and you can't easily chip this without hard wiring the thing. We've also got a three pole motor with no flywheel. This is one of the really cheap kinds of motors. More on this later on. But the gauge comes in at a reasonably consistent 14.2 to 14.3 millimeters back to back, which is just a tiny bit below the standard. Nothing wrong with that. So a really poor quality mechanism. Yeah, it's a cheap loco, that's for sure. But I wouldn't wish this mechanism on anybody. And if something goes wrong with it, and here's a hint, something did with mine, it's not an easy one to access and service and repair. So yeah, not one that I can recommend based on the mechanism. But here we go with the performance. I hope you enjoy this. It starts off pretty well, but it quickly goes downhill. All right, let's see if this thing works. I do know that previous versions of this model have been pretty good runners. So let's see if this one is forwards direction. Let's give it some juice. First ever run. There you go, a bit of a, a dodgy start there, but yeah, it seems to have picked up. And there we go, it's now running past at 50% speed. That's half power. There you go, it seems to be perfectly reliable over the points as well. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, let me back up a little bit. Yep. Dead zone on the express point is just there. I'm finding that this is going reasonably slow over there. Don't let me down. <laughs> there we go. And not stopping. And uh, yeah, I have noticed already before looking at the mechanism, all the pickups that this has got. So that is obviously helping this quite a bit. Okay, let's see what the crawl's like. Obviously I will run this in fully before casting a final judgment on the performance, but let's ease it up and see what this can do straight out of the box. Wow, started. And according to Hornby, this is a three pole motor, so the slow speed performance is incredible on it. And if it's one of those type sevens, which I think it is, very, very inexpensive motor and they don't last long in my experience. I've had quite a few of them fail, um, but if you sort of half know what you're doing, they're not too difficult to replace. And they're certainly cheap, like I say. Yeah, but that's really, really good. I don't think I'm gonna do a torque test on this, simply because I know these motors do have a propensity to burn out, and because those driving wheels are actually touching the track, They've got some real good traction. It's actually quite hard to push this along uh, with those traction tires gripping. So yeah, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna burn the motor out, but let's set this off at 50% speed and run this in and check how it gets on around the track. Here we go. All right, so it's going pretty slowly. Ooh, slightly labored. A little bit slower than I remember. Mm. I was going to say a little bit slower than I remember these going, but uh, now it's stopped, so it's infinitely slower. Let me give it a nudge. There we go. Well, that's surprising because the reliability seemed pretty good with those extra pickups, but it hasn't run in yet, so I guess I do need to let it do that before I worry about performance issues. So I'll give it 30 minutes forwards, 30 minutes back. Hopefully that will let the pickups bed in and the motor will get running as well. And then we'll come back and do some more testing. And I think I'll also couple it up to some auto coaches, see how it gets on with a load. So don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, I am back. And yeah, does this fill you with confidence? It shouldn't do. So yeah, it was hopeless. Absolutely hopeless. It just kept stopping. To start with, it got a little bit better. It actually managed it two or three times around the track without stopping. So I thought, yep, yeah, this is gonna do it. Running in, it's gonna fix the problem. And then it started cutting out again, even more than before. Sometimes on the straights, on different curves, mainly on curves, I would say, but not exclusively. So I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna pop this onto the running road and see if it improves. And to be fair, I've not tried it around the track again in a, a few minutes. So we will see how that goes in a second. Then the motor started to make a funny noise. I thought, oh, for goodness sake, what now? But I left it going. I thought, you know, it's brand new. Maybe it will just work itself out. No, the noise got worse. And just as I came over to investigate, the loco stopped like this. It just stopped. And when I put my ear to it, I could hear a humming noise. So I thought, oh, blimey, what is this? So I opened up the loco, popped the motor out. I thought, you know what? It's burnt out, hasn't it? 
Well, actually, no, it hadn't. I noticed there was this little felt pad stuck inside the motor. And Hornby usually use these either to gently secure wires in place, something like that, or to dampen vibration from the motor or something along those lines. So what must have happened was that pad must have been too close to the rotating armature and it had started to touch the armature as the motor spun and then the armature must have grabbed hold of it and pulled it into the motor and jammed it up. How dangerous is that? When a motor stalls like that, masses of current run through it, it was hot to the touch, red hot to touch. And if I hadn't have been here and sort of observed that and stopped it immediately, the motor could have gone into meltdown and generated loads of smoke and heat. Not something you want to have happen on your model railway. So was that bit of foam stray? Was it not supposed to be there? Or has that been put into all of these models? Is it going to be too close to the motor on other examples and cause the same problem? I don't know, but if I was Hornby, I would be investigating that very urgently and recalling these if necessary because that's a serious serious problem uh, anyway it's working again now luckily because i stopped it pretty much immediately it doesn't seem to have burnt the motor out and as you can see here on the rolling road it does seem to be nice and smooth i should also talk about the pickups then because it's quite strange that this should be so unreliable on the track given how many pickups this has got well, yeah, that's true. I don't quite understand what's going on there. When I filmed the mechanism section, I did actually readjust the pickups to make sure they were all making contact with the wheels, but that really didn't seem to make any difference. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on, but I could have a guess. I think that there might be too much slop in the wheels. As you can see, they've got quite a bit of travel left and right here, and there's nothing to stop these wheels from pressing the pickups flush to the chassis. And I think after going around a number of curves, I think that could be permanently deforming those pickups so that they then start making poor contact with the wheels. That's just a theory, but I think that must be what's happening here because I've adjusted the pickups time and time again. And every time I've gone to do it, I've noticed that another one's not touching the wheel properly. So yeah, it's hopeless. Seems to be okay on straights, although like I say, not all straights. And then most curves, it starts stuttering or if you're unlucky, stopping. So let's try it now on the track again. Have I got it on all wheels? Yeah, I think so. Seems to be all right. Does it get over the points now? Yeah, so it's pretty much performing exactly as it was on the straight, but I'll hook it up to some coaches and try it around the track in just a second. Speaking of coaches, I've set up a couple of auto coaches, which I actually got with another Hornby 14XX back in the day. So it's not much of a load, but I don't want to overload this anyway because it's got the traction tires and the cheap motor. So we'll just stick with that and see how it goes. Because of the traction tires though, the tractive effort is really, really decent. It comes in at 0.44 newtons or 27 coaches on straight and level track. Although again, bear in mind that's because of the traction tires and if you load it up that much, it will put masses of strain on the motor, which uh, I do not recommend. But anyway, let's go and test the couplings. Here we go. Oops, stuttering quite badly there. Yeah, you can, you can see that things aren't quite right with it, can't you? Right, so let's pull off. Yeah, let's go straight away. Let's go for 50% speed and see what happens. Okay, and that's noticeably a bit faster than before, I think, possibly because I've removed an obstruction from the motor. It's cut out on the points. On the middle line, I've got another of the Hornby 14XXs. This is the one that came with the auto coaches. And you'll notice this one's sort of hobbling and jerking around. That's because the traction tires have gone bad on this now. And on one of the wheels, half of the tires come off. I think I must have glued them on at some point to stop them coming off. Um, but that's another disadvantage of traction tires. They don't last. And then when they do go bad, you've got a, a seriously impaired loco. So I'll show you that one running. We'll see how long that lasts does derail though because of that. And then on the inside line, I've got another Hornby Railroad 1400, which is faulty in a different way. And that's because obviously the wheels with the traction tires on don't touch the track. So it's relying on the loco's weight, which isn't good to haul coaches. So that one's probably gonna stop. And here's the Railroad Plus one stopped immediately. And yes, the other two have stopped already, um, but we'll deal with that later on, giving that a nudge struggling really badly around the curves. 
stopping again, multiple stops there. Let's try and give it a nudge. <laughs> Goodness sake. So yeah, more or less utterly unusable. I've tried my best to fix it, which I shouldn't really do in a review, but I wanted to give it a fair chance. Readjusted the pickups many times, made sure that they were connecting with the wheels on the power supply, and then I put them on the track and it's just bad again almost immediately. Now I should say it's very possible that I've just got a faulty example here. I can't speak for any example other than my own, so it might be that you could buy one of these and find an example that works perfectly well. And if you do pick one of these up, let me know what it's like. Does it work properly? Does it work as it should? Do let me know. What I can say though is that mine is awful. Possibly the worst running Hornby Loco I've ever purchased. And that's having purchased more of these 14XXs in the past. Am I surprised at how faultily this is running? Well, not really, given the mechanism, but the number of pickups should have meant that this ran a lot better than it did, and I'm quite surprised that it doesn't, but like I say, I've got theories as to why that might be. But uh, yeah, not much more to say, not a good runner, and not a loco that I would recommend based on my experience. So here are some ratings for my new and frankly unusable 14XX from Hornby. The level of detail I've given two star. Now this is a railroad loco, so the level of detail was always going to be basic. So the lack of separately fitted smoke box dart, the lack of painted cam detail, the lack of sprung buffers, the over-reliance on molded detail is absolutely fine. It gets a couple of stars here because the decoration is okay. Yeah, the great western lettering looks good, all the numbers look absolutely fine. Finish of the model still not that great though, we've seen better in the railroad plus range. Performance gets a generous two star because obviously it's unusable. It keeps cutting out and that got worse over time and that bit of felt gummed up the motor which stopped it working entirely. And if I hadn't caught it, that motor could have gone into meltdown. It only gets two star because it did a good crawl, that's true. And when I first ran it, it was nice and smooth on straight track although the curves have always flawed this one. I should say that it could just be that my example is faulty. They might not all be like this but I'm rating the model I got and two star is the best I can do. Thanks to the traction tyres, the pulling power is okay, 27 coaches on straight and level track, although if you do that, you will burn this out because the motors are very, very cheap. Mechanism then can't be more than a one star for me because there's nothing good about it. Well, it does have lots of pickups, I suppose, but for whatever reason, they don't work properly. Other than that, accessibility is poor. It's a pain in the neck to remove the base keeper plate. No proper bearings on the axles, no DCC socket, no five pole motor, it's a three pole motor, no flywheel, and no special features, obviously, such as lights or speakers. Nothing to praise, so it's one star. The quality of the model is okay though. The paintwork was good. The way the model was assembled was absolutely fine, although it is very plasticky, at least on the body, which is why I've only given it four star. Value for money then, I I'm, I'm guess I'm giving this mark assuming that others will actually work because I'm not really sure that it's worth three star if it doesn't work, but let's be generous and say this is for if the loco works. Yeah, for less than 70 pounds, it's not too bad. The level of detail is very basic and I think I'd be willing to live with that, but the mechanism is really a little bit too poor for me to recommend. And I have to say the way mine performs, i.e. non-existently, is not surprising given the quality of the mechanism. So yeah, if you can find one that works, that's great. Obviously you are covered by warranty and your right to return a faulty model if you do buy one and it fails. But is it really worth it? I'm not entirely sure, I wouldn't recommend it. Overall, that's a score of 5.48 out of 10 or a grade of F. That puts it into eighth place on the ranking above the Liverpool connection and below the USA 440. So not one that I would recommend unless you want to completely dismantle it and rebuild it into a decent model, which is probably not worth the time. And so this is where I'm going to end the review. We've got one of my Hornby 14XXs derailed and crashed because its traction tires have gone bad and it can't stay on the track anymore. We've got my other Hornby 1400 whose driving wheels with the traction tires don't touch the track, so it's come to a halt on this slight incline with its coaches. And then we've got the new 14XX, the one I've reviewed today, which has come to a halt for reasons unknown on just a straight piece of track. So these have to be some of Hornby's worst designed and worst running models. Yes, I could be unlucky, but I have to say I doubt that. 
every single one of these 1400 locos has caused problems in some way. I've not even mentioned the motor that melted down in one of these that I've had to replace. So yeah, don't buy. What a waste of time. What a waste of money. Let's move on. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about these. But I think we will leave it there for now. So thanks for watching. You take care.